Hey there team, I recently came across a video here on YouTube where Mo Farah showed us his core routine. I thought it would be fun today for us to work through step by step each one of those exercises so that we can turn that into a routine we can do ourselves at home. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so the first of the exercises in Mo's video is a Russian twist. Now you can do this with a medicine ball. You can also do it as we are here with a plate. Marcus has got a five kilogram plate in his hand. What we're going to do is start out just holding the plate in both hands. And I find sometimes this is more comfortable than doing so with a ball because with the plate you can get a proper grip on it, whereas the ball over time can get a bit uncomfortable for your wrists. Now from here, what I want you to do is focus on keeping a straight back with a straight back, I want you to then think about pivoting on your tailbone. Okay, so I want you to lean back, take your legs with you so your heels leave the ground. Good, keep your core engaged, see if you can get a little bit further back. Great, I want you to keep your ankles in contact with each other and your knees in contact with each other if you can. And from there, I want you now to just tap the floor on one side with the plate and then the same on the other side. Good, keeping your chest up, eyes up and breathe for me, don't hold your breath. Good. Okay, it's literally just constant movement, left, right, left, right. You're never really putting the plate on the ground, it's just tapping. Now with your legs, you'll feel that although your torso is rotating, your legs with that rotation want to start shifting against each other. Okay, as you go from left to right, right to left. What I want you to try and do is keep your legs as still as possible. And that's why I've asked you to keep your ankles touching and your knees touching, because that will give you a little bit of feedback. Doing 20 of these, what I get you to do is three sets of 20, focusing on form, focusing on the quality of movement. Now, Mo, as Marcus did, did so with his feet off the ground, but you can regress that a little bit if you find that keeping your feet still and off the ground is too difficult. Because a lot of people, as soon as they lift up, they find that A, that balance point is hard to achieve, and B, their legs go everywhere. So you can keep your heels on the ground. Again, take a lean back, good, chest up, straight back, and again, we can do this, but this time, we're just keeping a little bit of contact with the feet on the ground. Don't elevate your shoulders too much. Keep your shoulders nice and relaxed and you're literally just twisting through the torso. Okay, three sets of 20. Now, the second of our exercises, we've got oblique crunches. So we can get rid of this. And with the oblique crunches, we're actually gonna get to you into a specific position first. Just shuffle this way a little bit for me. Good, from here, what I want you to do is just bring your ankle up onto the outside of your knee here. If you're using your right leg, to bring the knee up into this position on the right hand side, I want you to take your left hand and put it behind your head. Good, in that position, what I want you to do from here, before you even move, is think about flattening a lower back out against the ground. And that in itself should get you to begin to engage your core. And as you come to shorten the line up between elbow and knee, I want you to think about the movement coming from here. Okay, coming from your obliques. So let's go. Good, and back and up and back. We're doing 10 of these every single time, thinking about initiating the movement from those obliques. Once you've done 10, we'll then swap over and get you to do the other side. Keep breathing for me. It's really tempting sometimes with this, just to hold your breath and start straining through your neck as well. Nice, relaxed breathing. Just put the weight of your head in your hands, looking up towards the sky. Okay, opposite side, good. Head behind and off you go. Good, breathe, relax. Focus on that movement coming from your obliques. You should really feel your core with this. It should be quite isolated. What we're not doing is just throwing the elbow. Imagine you're almost kind of treating it like throwing a punch and you're trying to build momentum. Can you feel how as soon as you throw the elbow, it becomes a little bit less specific and less, a little bit less targeted? And more lower back moving more as well. Yeah, there's more movement left, right and center. It's more about trying to be specific and targeted with this movement. So with these doing 10 on each side, again, you do it three times through. Now, whether you choose to do this whole circuit, and we've got seven exercises with this circuit, whether you choose to do this three sets of one, three sets of the next, three sets of the next is up to you. But I would suggest doing this as a circuit and just doing it three times round. Now, our next exercise, still in this position, still focusing on that abdominal region, we're doing a bent leg crunch. Now, the difference between this and other forms of abdominal crunches is that this variety really helps to stop you beginning to dominate the movement with your hip flexors. So this is why it's called bent leg. We're working at 90 degrees at the hips. A nice way of doing this is just putting your feet together, splaying your knees a little, and this is kind of like the sort of butterfly sit-ups that we see in CrossFit for the same kind of reason. Because this position, 
If you then reach through between your knees and touch the inside of your ankles or as far through as you can, focusing again, go, focusing again on initiating the movement from your abs and you're not throwing your hands forwards, you'll be very specific about just using them to reach. This movement forces you to use those rectus abdominal muscles, those six pack muscles, rather than using your hip flexors. Hold that thought for a second there, Marcus, but bring the legs down now into this position. And again, just come up, touch my hand like a normal crunch. Can you feel how after a few of these, keep going, all of a sudden with this longer lever position of the leg, your hip, flexing, hip flexors can kick in. Yeah. You'll begin to feel the top of your thighs. Big difference if you're here in this position. Huge. Forces those abs to work. Okay, so again, nice little twist on our abdominal crunch. Now we're gonna get you doing three sets of 10 of those. Now, feel free to move it on beyond 10, but Mo in his video was doing sets of 10. Now, the next exercise we've got is again abdominal focus, but it's more of an extension control type exercise. So we're gonna be working with a uh, gym ball. Come a little bit further down. You need the room overhead with this. Let's start out with you just laying down. Okay, from here, what I want you to do is again get into that position where you're at 90 degrees at the hips. Take the ball in your hands in this kind of dead bug type position here. And you should have room hopefully behind you to reach back with the ball only just. Okay, and come back up and now put the ball between your ankles. Good, and straighten out. Good, and up you come, swap to the hands and back. And now back to the feet. Good, and you should feel as you extend in particular, the temptation, and by extend I mean get into this long position, the temptation is to lift your lower back off the ground there. You should feel that with focus and with control, you can maintain enough engagement through your core and squeeze through those lower abdominals to keep your back on the ground, even when you're in this long position. If you feel your lower back starts to lift up as you're in that long position, don't go as far. Okay, go half range reps. So show me some half range reps. So you're there and there. So only work to the point that you can control. As you get stronger with this, as you get better at this, you can go full range. Again, with these, I do three sets of 10. Okay, so 10 I would count as being every time you have the ball in the one position. So either between your legs or between your arms overhead. Okay, so it's boom, boom, one, boom, boom, two, boom, boom, three. Okay, from there, we're going to move into our hamstring bridge. So we're moving away from this focus on the core now, because you still need to use your core, especially when we're doing one leg at a time. But a hamstring bridge, yes, it's hamstringy. Yes, it's glutey. It's posterior chain exercise in general. Let's get you into this position. So lay down for me. Good, from there, we're going to just position the leg that isn't going to work to begin with. So that's this leg. So let's just come up into this kind of 90 degree position here. With this leg, we're going to go straight leg, but not locked out at the knee. Keep a, a little bit of active flexion at the knee there. This heel needs to be centered in the top of the ball. Okay, otherwise, as soon as you lift your hips off the floor, the ball's gonna shoot out sideways, you're gonna flip over, it'll be really awkward, and it's on camera. So what I want you to do is push down with your heel as you engage your core and lift your hips up. Good. We're gonna come up, hold for one moment, and come down. You should feel as you come up, you feel those hamstrings working, so the back of the thigh on this leg, but you should also feel that you squeeze your butt and engage your glutes. You want the glutes and hamstrings working together with this. And you can feel constantly you're moving around, shifting. It's difficult with your foot on the ball like this, just single leg. Okay, if single leg is too challenging, and again, I'd get you to do 10 on one, 10 on the other, but if it's too challenging, you can do a double leg version of this. So let's go both heels on the ball. You might need to reposition a little bit. There we go. Again, looking to keep slight flexion in the knee. Exactly the same exercise, but life's got a lot easier. Yeah. Right? So you've now got twice as many, um, well, obviously twice as many legs on the ball, but what I mean is you've got twice as much in terms of power from the hamstrings that you're using, so it'll be easier to lift your hips up, but you've also now got less of an asymmetrical load. You've got the symmetry, it's a little bit easier to control, but you can still see with the movement, yeah. there's still a bit of left and right going on. So either way, do 10 on one side, 10 on the other, or do 20 of these pulses with both legs up and down. Three sets, whichever you're choosing to do. Let's get you into our Superman position. So you're going to be prone over the top of the ball here. With this, we're looking to get you pretty much so the ball is positioned underneath your belly button. Okay, now you might want to go a little bit wider with your feet to give a little bit of a wider base of support. And with that wider base of support, we're then going to lift off, lift off your right hand and your left foot at once. Good, 
Not holding your breath, engaging your core, squeezing your butt on the lifting leg. See, it's not easy. Keep going for me. Good. Left, right, left, right, and alternating. And we're going to do five times through left and right. So it'd be 10 reps in total, essentially. So three sets of 10 alternating, so it's five on each side. Does it feel like you're having to engage your core to control that? Yeah. yeah? It doesn't look much, but this is quite a challenging exercise. Really forces you to engage your core and work into extension as well. So brilliant from a point of view of glutes, hamstrings, lower back. To be a bit more focused on the lower back, and again, an exercise which is really good to help us with our running posture, where a lot of us do get quite tired for our lower back and start to kind of sag forwards, we're gonna finish off with our hyperextensions or our lower back extensions. So we're gonna get in the same position, prone over the ball. Good, good. In that position, get a good, nice, comfortable stance with your, with your legs. So again, a bit of width on the, ba on the base of support will probably help you. Keep the legs straight, hands behind the head in this kind of almost kind of skydive type position here. From here, elbows apart. That in itself for a lot of us will challenge us to work those muscles between the shoulder blades. But from there, I want you to imagine that you're moving from here. So squeeze your bum and extend through your lower back and lift your chest up, good, and down. Now do so. As you come up, you're gonna to rotate towards the camera. Good, and down, and now rotate towards me. Good. Don't overcook it, okay? Only work through the range that you control, and certainly if there's any pain with this, I don't want anybody to force this, but you should feel that it's a muscular fatigue that begins to kick in, in your lower back, which is fine. There's kind of bigger muscle groups, muscles like quadratus lumborum in your lower back, working hard, that's fine, but certainly not any sharp pain. Any sharp pain, you stop this. With that, we're doing 15 reps. And with 15 reps, that's five going this way, five coming straight up, and five coming looking towards me. Three sets of 15 reps. I really hope you found that helpful. If you'd like to see another core workout from another world-class runner, we've got a workout from Eliud Kipchoge right over here. Go and check that one out. Certainly another real challenge. Now, if you're new here to the channel, don't forget subscribe because every week we're here with new videos to do with running technique, running rehab, strengthening, all those sorts of things. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye now.